Hello and welcome to Researching Ghost Stories. My name is Jenna Lucas and co-hosting with me today is Casey Long. We both work in the Kane Library. We're very happy to have you here. Um, so our objectives for today's skill builder are to help you research ghost stories. Um, we want to help you find books that you can use to research ghost stories as well as uh, resources that are available through the library and through public libraries to research the history of the property, where you live, or just generally your neighborhood. Um, we're going to be using WorldCat, which is the McCain Library catalog, as well as some historical newspapers that we have access to, and then, you know, the property records that are public records and some archival records as well. So just let us know if you're going to have any questions. So you can put them into chat. One of us will be monitoring chat, so feel free to do that. And Jenna, do you mind throwing into chat a link to WorldCat? So we're going to start with WorldCat. That's the tool that we use to find books uh, that are available, not just in Agnes Scott's uh, library or in our ebook collection, but around the world, um, mainly the United States. And so this can help you identify ebooks that you might be able to access from your home. Um, through our system or things that you might be able to locate nearby or to get through interlibrary loan. So Maya Galton and anybody else who is in the Atlanta area, you can always come to the library and pick up anything that's interlibrary loaned or in our collection as a physical item. So in WorldCat, if you've gotten a chance to go into WorldCat, um, you can use what we call index fields. It's, you can see right here that I have a search and it um, says SU colon haunted houses. SU is an index indicator that um, tells the database that you just want to search for haunted houses inside the subject field. The subject field is basically just like a social media hashtag, but instead of linking you to other posts that are on that particular topic, it links you to other books that are on that uniform topic. So it's a tag that's used inside WorldCat to find other things that have similar content. So really good subject terms include haunted houses for locating ghost stories. You can also use haunted places. That's another good subject term. Ghost is another good subject term. And then ghost stories is um, a good one. Ghost stories is going to be a lot more of your nonfiction stories and fiction stories. So you'll see a mixture if you're looking for interesting folklore tales, then ghost stories might be better than just ghosts. And then if you want to look at something that's more regionally focused, so if you're looking at California or Atlanta, um, then what you can do is use additional terms to narrow the focus of that search. So I would recommend going into advanced search. And as you can see, you get a couple of boxes when you go into advanced search, there's actually three, and you can use this pull down menu to designate it as subject. So instead of using SU colon, and then searching for your subject term, we can put in haunted places in here. And then because I want to find the place name that I'm looking for anywhere in the subjects and the um, item record, then I'm going to just use keyword because that means that maybe there's just a chapter that's going to mention Georgia or that maybe there's a chapter that's going to mention Los Angeles. So if I put keyword for Georgia or Atlanta, it's going to look for both Georgia or Atlanta anywhere in the record, but it has to be a book that's going to be about haunted places significantly. So that's how you can run your search. And we've found that there's lots of different uh, regional terms as well. So um, I could do as a subject term for a region, it could be Southern states, or I could do Georgia or Mississippi or Louisiana. And that will get books that were, are all talking about one of those regional states. So there's just different ways you can do it. But looking for a book about these states will get you to the more local stories. What are the big stories that are related and known for your region? And that might be a good place to start because then you'll see if for your neighborhood, if there is actually any big story that you didn't know about that might be useful. So Jenna's going to tell you just a little bit about um, other things that you can do in terms of your WorldCat search. I'm going to go over um, what's called backward searching, but real quick, 
Casey, we did have a good question in the chat that says, is there a significant difference between subject and keyword? And I think that's important to know. Yes, so subject and keyword are very different. Um, when you search the subject field, you're searching one field. It's not gonna search the title. It's not gonna search the description, the um, table of contents that might be in the description. Each record has a description. In fact, I don't know if we can see it in here, but you can see it right here. There's um, a description that's attached with this Haunted House book. Um, so keyword will search all of those different places and it's a much broader search. But if you search just for subject, it's only gonna be the things that are tagged, which you can see right here. It's only gonna search this field right here. Um, keyword will also search subject, but it will not search, uh, the subject will not search the keyword fields. I hope that helps. So you can see how that's useful to combine those two together, depending on where you think the information should appear. If you want the book significantly about Georgia, but you want it to mention haunted houses, then you would do haunted houses as a keyword rather than as a subject term. Great, thank you, Casey. So on to backward searching. So um, how Casey is, is showing us the search is very important. And once you've found a book that fits what you're looking for, it's really helpful to go into the description in our catalog and look at the, the subjects. Because how I would describe these are the books that are trying not to be found. You know, sometimes they'll have a funny subject term that you wouldn't have thought to look for. So Casey, if we go to the next slide, um, you can see I, I was able to get a few more books from a different subject term. You'll see in the top left corner, we've got fiction and nonfiction. So you can kind of pick whether or not you want to do fiction or nonfiction books, and it'll tell you how many of those searches came up. And then one more thing about backward searching is if you like a specific author, if they've written something that really makes sense to you, you can look up that author and see if they've written articles or other works before or after that specific search. And you can actually click on their name here and it'll run that search for you as an author search using the index field AU colon and their name. And you can also search how um, other people have referenced that author's work. Mm -hmm. So, are you going to talk about accessing books or do you want me to? I can. Okay. So, obviously you can get books from the library, but since we're all virtual right now, you can also get electronic books. Um, you can narrow the search items in WorldCat to search our database, which is the Agnes Scott College Library, and then you can specifically check for ebooks. So that's something that you'll have access to pretty much instantly. And then if you would like to come to campus and pick up some books, then you can place a hold in the catalog and then we will pull it for you and bring it down to the front door and check it out to you. And then you can take it home. Or you can request it through interlibrary loan. So you don't have to narrow it down to things that are owned by Agnes Scott if you live close by. You can access pretty much anything. All right, so the, um, if, does anybody have any additional questions about finding books? These skills will be helpful for some other things that we're gonna be doing related to property research, but just wanted to make sure that there's no additional questions about finding ghost stories in books. That's our, kind of your broad first step. All righty, well, let's move on to property research and where to begin. So, this is definitely a skill that you would use if you were trying to find the potential origins of a ghost that might be haunting your property. Um, but it's also a technique that wasn't really designed for that. So there's lots of other uses. I personally love using these uh, skills, tr trying to understand more about my house, how, um, what style of house do I have? Why was my area developed? Um, what was here before? and has anything interesting happened on my street? And I share this information with my neighbors, and I'm sure that there are other reasons why somebody would want to know the genealogy of their house other than just personal edification. So um, 
there's lots of resources out there for that. And one of my favorites, I don't know if any of you watch this history detective show. I love this history detective show, but they have a checklist on a building background that is really useful for the steps. And as you can see from this, there are tons of steps when you are getting into really understanding the history of your house um, or your neighborhood. There's a lot of steps that you can take and not all of these are easily accessible on the web. So it's nice to have a checklist that you can go through. Um, history Detective also has some really other cool techniques if you wanna look into them. Another group that's really useful for um, learning about the history of your neighborhood or your local area is the American Society for State and Local Research, which is an organization dedicated to preserving and interpreting local community history to make it more meaningful. They have a lot of resources. They have a magazine. They have technical leaflets, but they also have this great book series. Um, and looking at the books, that's actually how I got the book that um, taught me a little bit about property research. You can see they have several things here. The book that I found was called Nearby History, and I was able to get that through interlibrary loan. So it was really useful for identifying what are the published sources of information and what are the unpublished sources um, and what things might be available digitally online. So that, this is a great textbook, but they also have a lot of other great titles that might be useful to you. Um, and then finally, um, not finally, but another option is to do a search in uh, Google for a LibGuide. You can use the term local history LibGuide, ghost story LibGuide, historical preservation LibGuide. Basically, librarians just love to create guides to research, um, very specific elements of research. And so some people at larger institutions might have a guide that's gonna be perfect for the area that you want to develop. So if you're out in California, you might do California historical preservation LibGuide, and you might come up with a great guide with some steps of local resources. I know there's one that's great for New Orleans. Um, so that's a tip that I like to do is all of our research guides that libraries create are called LibGuides. So that's something that's helpful. And one that you can see that's interesting that Jenna found, this is a, a first year class that's focused on ghost stories. So she had just searched for ghost stories um, and you can search for ghost stories LibGuides and you'll find something similar. And that's how she was able to get herself oriented to the types of resources that might be useful. So finding interesting books that relate regionally to ghosts in that area, and then thinking about primary versus secondary sources, and what would be most helpful for learning about ghosts through those sources. So those are just a few of the things. And then finally, of course, there is doing a WorldCat search again. This time, I uh, recommend that you search for dwellings, research United States handbooks and manuals. Um, you can also search for nearby history, just like Jenna said, and then follow the subject terms to do a search like this. And you can see that there's tons of other sources that might be useful. So those are our recommendations for just finding a large guide to get you started. Um, but next I wanted to just mention some of the types of resources that you might use. There's a lot of things that are fun, and I don't know how many of you have done genealogy research, but you can get yourself lost just playing with these, seeing what's available digitally from different types of sources, and then keeping track of what you might actually have to go find in person. Um, I spent pretty much three hours yesterday playing with digitized maps and newspapers. Um, so historical newspapers that are, we have through our collection, that the Library of Congress has through their collection, that individual state archives have of their collection. I was playing with those yesterday. I was playing with these Sanborn maps that are fire maps that are from usually before 1920. Um, there's not one for DeKalb County, but there is one for Fulton County. And what it's useful for is A, verifying place names, and B, um, being able to see what the structure of the street looked like. So um, the one that I pulled up originally for the case study house that we were gonna do, I apparently got the wrong end of the street but had that been the right end of the street, it would have showed that in um, 1911, there was nothing there. So um, that property would have been something that was developed at the time that it was built in 1920, and it wasn't a replacement of anything. So those are some useful things to know. Um, and it also gives you the context of other names that you might be able to use in your search. There are two government agencies that are usually in your state 
uh, government that are helpful. The first is the county assessor. So I honestly use the tax property assessment um, website all the time to look up information about addresses and who lives where. Um, and some of those will have historical records available within the digital record. But no matter what, the county assessor is the one that will have historical records and you can go and make a request in person if you can't find them digitally. And then also, this is something that is definitely on my list of things to do. Um, finding the deed and property records at the county clerk, that is, I believe, my next step for researching my property is to go down there and make the request because I don't know who owned the property before. So that's going to be a very useful technique. Um, wills and bio records are also there. Some of those you can actually find in the ancestry.com database, which is available to you through our library until at home until December. Um, after that, we're not sure if they're going to allow outside access um, because traditionally you usually have to just use that inside our library, but that's another place you can look for that. Um, another tool that's great is Googling state archives, state digital archives, local historical societies, and local libraries. They all are developing out their own collections, like DeKalb County has a collection of maps that are local to the DeKalb Historical Society. Same with Georgia State University, they have another collection of maps. So this information is all over the place. So it's useful to use this checklist, identifying have I tried here. Um, 1940 and before 1940, you'll be able to find census records that will list the people who lived on a particular street, who are the neighbors, where are they from, were they able to read, did they own their property, things like that. Library of Congress, like I said before, has tons and tons of resources. They have pictures, they have um, old newspapers, Chronicling the United States is um, one of their collections. They have lots of uh, digitized resources that might be useful to you. Newspapers, which we'll talk about in a moment. And then finally, um, excuse me, books about county and state history. So go back again to WorldCat. Look for books that um, are about DeKalb County uh, history, Georgia history. Those things are gonna be really useful to you. In the library collection at Agnes Scott, there is a book called Atlanta and the Environs. Um, it's a weird name, but from that, when I had a question from somebody, somebody randomly came into the library. This was the best question ever. They randomly came into the library and they were like, hi, we are visiting from out of town and we wanted to know why is the street called Ponce de, de Leon? And uh, I was like, well, first off we say Ponce de Leon, um, but let me research that for you. And in that book, I was able to discover that the reason why, does anybody know why it's called Ponce de Leon? Did he ever visit us here? The answer is no, he did not visit us. But if you go down to where Ponce City Market is, that used to be an amusement park type area that had a natural springs and the natural springs is still there. So um, it, that street was called Ponce de Leon because um, that was a trolley destination that people would go to. They'd take the trolley out to this little park and it was thought to have um, regenerative properties. So you could go there and become more youthful. So that's how we got the name Ponce de Leon. And that book was core for me being able to tell me about that street. So almost every county, um, almost every state has something like that. Yes, Dr. Akasi was talking about Florida. He was died looking for the fountain of youth. So yes, he never made it here. <laughs> so he was always just in Florida and some other places. So those are some of the core tools that you can use and we are happy to help you locate those but I just wanted to give you a checklist of those. And then um, the best one that we can offer to you, um, Jenna, do you mind putting these uh, URLs into the chat? One is news and newspapers. And that's one of our best databases for current information. Um, so from 1990 to the present, if you wanna know what has happened potentially on your street in your neighborhood, run a search in there for your street and then um, you can narrow it down to the papers that are local to your region. And then the same is true for historical newspapers. Um, to, we have a ton of historical newspapers. We have them for Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, um, St. Louis. I believe we might have LA, but I can't remember. 
um, I definitely know we have San Francisco, um, Arizona, we have several different newspapers that are historical. And so you can just follow the link um, from McCain Library to databases A to Z, then narrow it down by type to newspapers. And this is only saying that we have five because I narrowed it down to the S's, but we actually have many, many more than this. But this is an example of some of the historical newspapers that we have. So they range in dates. Some of them are 19, up to 1922. Some of them are 1950. In Atlanta, we have the Atlanta Daily World. And that, I believe, goes from the 1920s up until uh, early 2000s. And then um, we also have the Atlanta Journal and Constitution, which only goes up to probably the um, 80s. So, um, so those are some sources that you can use that are, are useful um, for researching our history. And as I said before, there are other types of collections. I've been researching my family past in Missouri, and I've done this over the course of several different years. Um, they've expanded their digital newspaper project in Missouri so that a few years ago when I was looking for things from Marthasville in uh, Washington, Missouri, um, I was not able to find the paper that I wanted, but now I am and I was able to learn all sorts of things, including that on my family's land, there apparently was a floater in a pond. So that's definitely a ghost story in the making. And so um, what you'll be searching for when you're looking inside the newspapers is maybe you'll search for an address. So you might do um, a street address with the number and the street. You might search for a neighborhood name. So I might search for East Atlanta. Um, my particular area is called Gresham Heights, but that name, neighborhood name is something that the real estate agents kind of developed. So I'm pretty sure that that has only been around since 2003. So you have to keep in mind how has the neighborhood potentially changed? You also need to look and see, has the street name changed? My street that I live off of is Brannon and, not Brannon, um, it's Boulder Crest and Fayetteville. These are two of the main streets that come towards my house. Don't really know exactly the makeup, but I know that the street name um, wasn't that in the past when this property was developed. Um, it used to be that it was South McDonough Avenue, which is the street that goes, <laughs> or McDonough Avenue, which is the street that goes straight by Agnes Scott, and that was surprising. But things have changed, and that street is not a name that's near my house at all anymore. Um, so things can change, so you have to keep that in mind when looking. So I sometimes look at, for street names that are nearby where I'm located, because um, you never know what's, how they're going to phrase it. Um, there was a really great suggestion to look for landmarks. So if there's a hospital that's near you, there might be some interesting things that you can find out about um, your area based off of that landmark, especially if you're looking for pictures. There might be pictures of your house if you live nearby something that's significant. So you can look for nearby streets or landmarks. Um, you can look for individuals who lived inside your house, which Jenna's going to talk about in a minute. Um, and then just broadly, ghost stories that relate to your neighborhood are obituaries. So those are some of the things that you might look for inside newspapers. Um, and then, uh, let's see, uh, somehow, there we go, oh, nope. I guess I covered everything. I feel like I have exactly the same search. Anyway, I'm gonna turn it over to Jenna. So I think that's all that I needed to tell you about newspapers. Okay, well, we are going to stop recording in just a moment, but I will tell you just about some of the, the techniques we used in our, our case study that's upcoming. Um, so we were looking at the property that I own. So we looked at um, the property listing to look at the tax records and find the current property owner, which is me, and then the sale history, which is who owned it in the past. So you can use public resources like that. Um, you can also use state archives and collections uh, that might be available where you are. And then of course you can use the historical newspapers through Agnes Scott. Um, I'm ready to go on to the next one, but we should stop recording. Okay, so we're gonna pause the recording and um, we'll pick this up uh, when we close out. Uh, so.
Okay. So I wanted to let everybody know that um, we are here to help in all the traditional ways we are usually here to help. You can email us if you're trying to get started. We can't do all the research for you, but we're happy to be a partner with you as you're trying to search for something. And we'll use the skills that we have to guide you in the right direction. So if you wanna email us and we'll get you started that way, you can use the chat box on our library homepage. Anytime you see this green light on, then we'll try to help you there or get you to the right person. And then finally, you can schedule a research appointment with us. And to be honest, if you are researching an area that is somewhere else, like for instance, me wanting to research my family in Missouri, I would feel completely comfortable contacting libraries in these same ways. All libraries are really nice people that are um, ready to help, and it, particularly your public library is usually very helpful with these things. So we highly encourage you to do that. So I'm gonna stop the recording now and open it up for questions. <laughs>